Hi guys, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of my vlog. Um, viewing figures are down again, but that might just be because it's been a short week. The last episode was only up on Monday, and it does feel like it's been a short week. But there's been a decent bit going on, I guess. Um, Work-wise, not a great deal. Um, but outside of work, certainly plenty going on. Um, I have been invited by the students group of the LGBT Association of Docs and Dentists to give a wee half hour, 45 minute lecture, come talk, come workshop at an event they're holding um, on the 17th of March at the Bishopsgate Institute in London, um, talking about my experience of being trans within the NHS and transitioning and some advice for any trans students and some advice for any allies, so that'd be interesting. Um, I've got a few ideas, but if anybody can think of things that I maybe should include, um, just send me a message and I'll be uh, glad to incorporate it as best I can into my presentation. Um, all the things that have been going on, we had a Friday evening quiz um, with the LGBT staff versus students, um, which was good fun. That was, um, yeah, just a couple of days ago now. Um, there were five teams, one staff team and four student teams, and our staff team really had three members, and I'm delighted that we did not come last. Um, so congratulations to the eventual victors, the last Jedikes, um, and an amazing name as well. Um, but I can say we didn't completely disgrace ourselves, I hope. Um, <laughs> Transition-wise this week, I would say I've been okay. I've not noticed any major differences. Um, I had my appointment with Psych on Friday and i um, happy with my progress and not due back for another three months. I'm gonna stay on the modified release of the vaccine for the time being and mood is in general been okay, um, but I have felt a bit lonely this week. Um, missing my girlfriend, she's away for the holes, missing my daughter more so than normal, missing my dog more so than normal. Um, so major thanks to those of my friends who've taken time out to see me or speak to me, but also to those friends who've not been able to because I know everybody's got busy lives and I would like to apologise for being a bitch to those of you who've not been able to see me. Um, it's only because I'm feeling lonely and down about myself, so um, you know who you are and I'm very sorry. Um, all the things I've done this week, I've got my tattoos topped up. Um, my brows, you can see, are seriously on point, and major thanks to Nia at Butte Browdery, and I've also had my tattoo on my forearm topped up, and again, major thanks to Kim at Custom Inc. So that's been my week in a nutshell. So as for the topic that I want to talk about this week, um, this is the time magazine person of the year cover um, so I want to talk a wee bit about this and the me too hashtag which has been trending a fair bit recently and um, just a few observations and reflections um, I don't expect everybody to agree with me but I do hope to provoke some thought and discussion um, like I always do um, so there does seem to be Firstly, a lot of victim blaming going on. Um, this is not helpful and it's something that you do see as a reaction to rape culture in general. You know, it's never the victim's fault what happens. Um, and it's really, really unhelpful and it's trolling of the worst form. Second thing, why didn't these people come forward sooner? There are a variety of reasons why these individuals didn't come forward sooner and I totally sympathise with them, not in a position to be able to empathise with them because it's never happened to me and although I'm sure I know people who have been sexually assaulted and harassed, they've not, most of them have chosen not to confide in me 
um, for the large part. Um, however, there are, there are tons of reasons why people don't come forward sooner. Um, the main one, just reflecting on the whole situation, being the person who happens to have sexually harassed them or whatever is still in a position of authority or power over them and severe fear of reprisals either for yourself or for your family or whatever may be the case and I can totally understand why people don't feel like they're able to come forward until they are in a more comfortable and a more secure position. It's the same reason why people didn't come forward with allegations until after Jimmy Savile died. He was still in a position of power and authority up until the time of his death. Um, so I totally sympathise with the victims here. And the third thing that's been circulating is, oh, I know XXX and they wouldn't do this. It's like, really, do you really know them? It's like, even people who've been convicted of child abuse of the vilest kind, you know, in certain cases, even their spouse wasn't aware of what was happening. And you think because you've been to one or two film premieres that you know them intimately and that they would be incapable of sexual abuse or sexual harassment, uh, that's just nonsensical. So that's my take on some of the comments I've seen um, floating about, but actually there is a serious underlying issue here. Now, people should be supported coming forward whenever they, these allegations come to light, be they male or female victims, male or female perpetrators, able-bodied, disabled, lesbian, straight, whatever. People should be made to feel secure and supported. Um, that's the first thing I want to say. And yes, the Me Too movement is an initial step, but there's a danger of the bigger issue here being lost in all the media furore uh, surrounding the issue. And to my mind, that's the inherently unequal relationships that arise from industries with a strict hierarchical patriarchal structure especially, but not limited, to show business. You know, taking the example of the showbiz industry, how many people are out there struggling to make it in the industry as actresses, whatever, who voluntarily or semi-voluntarily or are coerced into sleeping with producers or filmmakers and these allegations never come to light because you feel pressurized into that because you want to get a job to try and get ahead in your career. And it's not just the film industry, it happens elsewhere as well. And to my mind, that's the bigger issue here which needs to be addressed, and I'm not sure how we go about addressing that or making things more equal. I mean, you can take the example of the higher education, further education sector. You know, if you're a professor, you're forbidden from entering into relationships with students, and that's not to say it doesn't happen, but it's explicitly there in your university's code of conduct that you shouldn't be doing this. Um, I'm not saying that's something that would be practical within certainly the entertainment industry, but it's one of a number of steps that needs to be taken to address the uneven situation that exists there. Um, so answers on a postcard, please. Um, I'm going to try and keep this week's short and sweet, I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. Um, and I hope you'll stay tuned for next week. Um, gonna be going to see Star Wars later and can't wait. Um, so, bye for now.